Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, Episode 61, A Slave to Sin No More, a guided Christian meditation on John chapter 8, verses 33 through 36. I work as a hospice chaplain. I got a job again. Yes. And I've also worked as an ICU chaplain. My purpose in making this podcast is to help you find more peace in your life and to be open to be changed and improved by the Spirit of God. I do this by using six main parts. Guided breathing and relaxation is number one. Number two is a reading from the Bible. Number three is a reflection on the meaning of this scripture and meditation. Number four, prayer asking God for guidance. Number five, contemplative silence. And number six, visualization. So get into a place where you can sit comfortably for 20 minutes. And if you feel comfortable to do so, close your eyes now. As we dedicate this time to pursuing God's Word in a relationship with God's Spirit, allow any other cares of the world to be placed out of your mind gently as you begin to place all of your focus on preparing your heart and your mind to receive a message from God in His Scriptures. So as you do this, gently allow air to come into your body slowly and deeply all the way down to your belly. As you breathe in, you feel this natural calming influence that comes from being a creation of God. In His wisdom, He has allowed us to feel a rush of relaxation as we begin to find slow and rhythmic breathing. As you allow the air to come all the way into your stomach, perhaps even counting to seven on the in and seven on the out breaths. With each passing breath, you feel that air come in and you feel it washing away any tension that may be present on your muscles. And as you feel this, don't be frustrated or embarrassed by any tension here. Just allow it to be noticed and allow your breath to gently wash it away. As you do this, you can feel this anxiety in your body lessening. And with repeated practice, it takes a shorter amount of time to reach even deeper levels of relaxation and preparation. As you continue breathing, you feel this peace radiating not only from your stomach where your air is coming in, but also every part of your body. You feel your shoulders, back, arms, legs, hands and feet. Every part of you feels this relaxing and powerfully calming influence. And you start to feel peace and calm and just enjoy that feeling with a heart full of gratitude for God. So now it's time to place our focus on this scripture. And again, this message is from the book of John, chapter 8, and it's a direct continuation, the literal verse after the scripture that I covered last week which had to do with Jesus approaching these people who wanted to be his followers and teaching them that they must follow him and also that he, the truth, would set them free. And we read in verse 33, They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall 
be set free. Jesus replied, Verily, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Now we'll read from the King James Version, chapter 8, verse 33. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How, sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. What does this scripture mean to you? Reflect on this meaning. Continue breathing deeply as you allow this message and the things that stood out to you to penetrate deep into your heart. So this is the first time where I felt inspired to have a follow-on or second episode of the same scripture two weeks in a row. So as Jesus is talking to these would-be followers, it's interesting to note that their first response was that they had never been slaves and they needed no freedom more than they had. Here I think is another similarity to our lives. I've noticed as human beings, we alternate between two different states. One is catastrophe and the other is complacence. Now granted, sometimes we can find deep spiritual meaning for a period of time, but oftentimes, if we're not careful, we can live exclusively in these two realms. Sometimes we either feel we have the worst day ever, or we blow it off and we don't think about it too much and we realize it's just an average day. Sometimes we are shown our weakness and we are compelled to receive God's help. And at other times, we feel like we're doing pretty good by ourselves. Now, in this scripture, these people seem to be feeling this second feeling. When we fail to see our servitude of sin, we fail to see the miracle of God, of ridding it from us. And as we preach, read, learn, and praise God for His grace, we can be tempted to feel that we have always been free of that sin or it wasn't really ever too difficult to overcome to begin with. We may find ourselves metaphorically thinking that we have never really been a slave to sin. Jesus teaches us that that is not true. We cannot become what he wants of us unless we are willing to completely abandon our own complacence and feel his love fill us and change us. So in this way, we can serve each other as well as we realize our dependence on God in all human interactions. Please join me in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we come to thee in prayer and supplication, asking for guidance and a blessing that we may be blessed to find faithfulness, to find dedication, to find overwhelming heart-filling gratitude for the sacrifice of thy son and how it allows us to overcome sin and death. Inflame our hearts with this gratitude that we can feel it so deeply that it can bring peace to us now and motivation to us and fill us with thy spirit to continually march forward in faith doing all things that thou would have us do. May we 
be successful in continuing to walk with thy spirit and have it fill our lives and fill us with peace. In this we say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to continue in prayer. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now we're going to spend the next few moments in contemplative silence. Our goal here is not to deeply delve intellectually in what we've reflected on already, but to feel it and experience it. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now this next part, this visualization, can be elusive to some people as you've reached out to me via email, and I want to give a more concrete example. Whatever your experience was in this particular listening, sitting right where you are right now, thinking the thoughts that you've thought. I want you to reach out to me and contact me and explain what this process was like. What did you experience? What did you learn? And what did you feel? And you can do that at my website, christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact. So as you do, I want you to reflect for 30 seconds or so on what you would say as you type this email to me, just about exactly what your experience was here in this moment. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now, whatever this experience that you had was, I believe deeply in my heart that cumulatively these experiences can change us. Through interactions with God's Spirit, He can mold us to become what He wants us to be. The scriptures are replete with examples where he asks us to follow him. He asks us to act. So now as you've had this opportunity, this blessed opportunity to reflect on this scripture and to reflect on what it meant to you and how you felt it, 
Now I want you to dedicate yourself to living this in your life, having it change you somehow. In order to do this, let's visualize a time and a place specifically that could be different in your life as a result of the moment that you shared here with this scripture. Let's use an example. Let's say that sometimes you're too hard on yourself. And although you realize the power of sin, you sometimes recoil from this idea of sin because you feel uncomfortable. Let's say that that's a history that you have. And in this moment, you have felt peace, the serious nature of sin and how God helps us overcome it. As you reconcile these two thoughts, I want you to visualize yourself living in a place where now you can experience this idea of deep and profound sin without experiencing guilt. That's a specific example. Now you can do this one or something else, but I invite you to visualize how your life can change as a result of the spirit-driven insights that you received here today. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now, I want to say a couple things here and don't get derailed here. I'm going to come back with a final monologue and a question that I want you to consider and respond to me. As we conclude, I want to thank two different people who sent me an artistic contributions to the logo that I'm designing. One was beautiful calligraphy that I hope to incorporate because mine's a little chunky there and I also had someone offer to uh, create a logo for me and both of those things I'm actually super excited about so um, I, I very much want to move forward ever evolving and changing this podcast to become more and more in the vision that brings peace and that it's inviting to people to to continue to listen to and share so thank you for that I also want to report that Patreon is very helpful for me. Now, I haven't spent the Patreon funds, but I have goals and aspirations for this podcast, more specifically to increase its reach. Now, I spend money on hosting as well as advertisements and this time, but that's something that I feel is my contribution. So if you feel in any way that you have a contribution to make, either financial or by going to patreon.com forward slash Christian Meditation Podcast or by sharing this podcast, I would be ever so grateful. You can find more information and links at the website ChristianMeditationPodcast.com. And again, feel free to reach out at ChristianMeditationPodcast.com forward slash contact. The question is this, what can you do in your life to live as a child of God this week. And I don't mean ethereal, just, you know, out there being a child of God. I mean specifically, what actions would you take that are consistent with that of a child of God? And what can you do this week to do that? And here's a f- my final thought. I want you to think, how is it that sin causes us to be in servitude? We may feel that It is enough to serve God and try to do good, but that is not enough. He wants all of us. He wants us fully committed as a son or daughter. We can become joint heirs with Christ, but that's only if we are willing to take up the role of children of God and children of his covenant. We cannot hope to keep one foot in Babylon and to work part-time as a servant of Jesus Christ, we must give ourselves up truly and become children of God. I promise that if you do this and you make the effort to attempt this, 
God will fill you with feelings of accomplishment and peace as you, together with His Spirit and faith, change your very nature and improve to become what He wants you to be. I know that if you do this, you will improve. He loves us without fail, nevertheless. Even if we don't change, but he also wants the best for us. I know that if we do this, we will experience his peace and his greatest blessings, and we will return to live with him and see him as he is. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.